If my camera's wobbly, I do apologize. I don't have anybody to hold the camera for me, and I've long since lost my devices that actually hold my phone. Uh, but today, I'm going to talk about something that I've been actually thinking about and pondering for the last four or five weeks, and I think that it's very timely and important. It's going to be on marriage, uh, but specifically the qualities of a godly wife, as well as and don't think that I'm going to be just picking on the women because I'm not. Um, also, the qualities, another video on the qualities of what a godly husband should look like. We are definitely in the last days, and this is a very hard time to actually be in a marriage covenant with anyone. Uh, there's just, society is such that it's very difficult to find the right people, even in the church. Uh, many times, uh, the divorce rate in the church is every bit as high as it is in the world. And you have to ask yourself why. Well, I do explain that on one of my other videos. I don't think that most marriages are godly marriages. Most marriages are even people who are actually Christian, even in the church. I think very few people who will call themselves Christian today are actually Christian. They're not trusting on them on the blood of Jesus Christ solely and completely and all by itself for payment for their sins. They are trusting upon them uh, upon the cross upon the, on the blood of Christ plus themselves. You can't have it that way. Either Christ saves you wholly and completely in and of himself or he doesn't save you at all. And uh, he either pays for your sins in full or he doesn't pay you for your sins at all. With that said, I want to delve into what the book of Proverbs has to say about a godly wife. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? Suggesting that it's very difficult. Even back then it was difficult. Even more so into our, in, in, our, in, in our current world. Uh, this world is perishing very fast. And it is about ready to be wrapped up, our human history is about ready to be wrapped up by God. He's about ready to intervene in human history and wrap up everything as we have ever known it. So you better be bracing yourself for that because it's going to happen soon, probably in our lifetimes. I don't know whether I'll be alive for 100% sure, but I know that uh, many people watching this video will be. But anyway, who should find or shall or can find a virtuous woman? suggesting that it's a difficult task, it's a difficult thing. Uh, for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband, and this is important, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. It doesn't say that the heart of her husband trusts in her. It says that, that the heart of her husband safely trusts in her. In other words, his trust is well placed. Uh, he can trust her in any circumstance uh, so that he shall have no need of spoil, so he won't be destroyed, so he won't be injured or wounded uh, or broken because of her uh, violation of loyalty. Okay? And she will put him first, by the way. That's her husband. That comes before anyone else. No matter what song and tap dance, they like the tap dancing song, and most of it's empty. And people will find that out in the end. Uh, many, many women have left their husbands only to wish they had never done so. And then the damage is done, and it's too late. Too late, and their life is a ruin, and they're miserable. And they brought it on themselves. But anyway... The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Not just trust, but safely trust in her, because he knows he can. So that he should have no need of spoil. She will do him good. She, shall, she will do him good. And not evil all the days of her life. She, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She brings 
her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. So now what we see here is that she's a hard worker. She's working hard right alongside her husband to accomplish, um, you know, things to, in life, to be successful and accomplish things. Now notice also, too, it says that she considers a field and buys it. What does that mean? That means she's, she considers it and she buys it. She's frugal with her money. She's careful with it. With, uh, with the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. Again, talking about her willingness to work, her willingness to get dirty and actually get in there and help her husband. Uh, she girds her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. In other words, she's vigilant over her family. She watches over them with, the, with her family. She keeps the lights on, so to speak. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. She's very generous and kind. Okay? Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, uh, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. In other words, she's good at business. She maketh, uh, uh, she sells it, and she delivers girdles unto the merchant. Uh, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in times to come, because she has honored her husband, and she has worked diligently with her husband, with her own two hands, and she developed frugalness, carefulness with money, uh, and she gives with generosity to those less fortunate than herself. Okay, so it goes on. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. All right, kindness, not bitterness, but kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household. That's pretty self-explanatory, I'd say. And eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not lazy. She takes good care of her household. And even if that's just her husband, she takes good care of him. She's a good helpmate. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exceedest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, and this is important, she must fear God. She must actually have faith in God and His ways. She must be a born-again Christian. Um, anyway, she fears the Lord. She gives place to God and His word. Okay? She shall be praised. God says in the days to come, she will be praised, she will be raised up, and she will be honored. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. And not only her own works praise her in the gates, but if she's not a virtuous woman, let her own works disgrace her in the gates. So right there we have a qual the major qualities of what a really good wife would look like. Good luck finding her, but I would suggest that you pray on it and you seek the Lord on it, and that the Lord's going to give her to you as wife, genuinely. Uh, he'll bring you to a place where you know it, um, and he doesn't bring, you know, Jesus said what, man, what, what God has brought together, let no man separate or put asunder. In fact, 
If God has actually brought a union together, most unions are not from God, to be quite honest. Most of them are just due, for, due to a person's own foolish choices or, or due to lust or to, due to money or some kind of ill-gotten gain, some kind of advantage they think that they might get, uh, or just to avoid loneliness, whatever the case might be. It's not really planted by God. It's not really... Uh, brought together by God, but if God does bring a marriage together, he'll tell you, husband, first off, before the wife, uh, because you're the head of the household. We're going to discuss your responsibilities in another video, but, uh, but the bottom line is, um, if it's really planted of God, if God really brings a relationship together and any person tries to subdue that, tries to talk against that, talk evil against it, tries to speak destruction upon it or try to persuade one partner or the other to separate, God will destroy those people who are doing it. Utterly destroy them. Their life will become a ruin even if they don't think so. My advice is, you know, what God has brought together, as Jesus said, let no man separate. The key is what God has brought together. And the Bible says that God is love, and he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now, let's read something in Ephesians, a little bit more on wives. So I want to turn to Ephesians real quick. i got to find it. But so we're in Corinthians, Ephesians. Here we are. Now it says, um, I believe, it starts out with this exhortation Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Okay? And then it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath or anger but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Very important, folks. <laughs> now, none of us are masters at this, but it goes on to say, we're going to skip servants. Most of us don't have servants. We're going to drop down to uh, so we're going past the masters and it says It says about wives and husbands, it says, it says here in Ephesians chapter 5, starting at 20, it says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, I want to point out, too, before some men grab that and try to beat, browbeat their woman into submission, it's not what it's talking about here. I mean, if you love your wife, you'll value her opinions. You'll be kind toward her, long-suffering toward her. But here's the thing. When long-suffering means you put up with a lot of garbage. And you'll walk toward her in love, just as Christ walks in love toward you and I. And to the church. Okay? But when it says, when it tells, um, when it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's an important adage. As unto the Lord. 
So, when your husband is trying to give you godly counsel, ladies, and you know that they're trying to lead you uh, in the instruction and the admonition of the Lord, and they're trying to guide you according to His Word, you are to submit to that. Now, if he's out there carousing and not being a godly man and setting a very poor example for both you and your children, you're not under any obligation to submit to that. In fact, God says to submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. So if the Lord would not ask you to do certain things, and he is, you're not under obligation there to submit to that but if he's trying to give you godly counsel and he's trying to give you uh, spiritual instruction uh, and he's trying to guide the household with your best interest in his mind and heart you are commanded by God to submit to him in all things in all things as unto the Lord all right, so we know what a virtuous woman is. We know that she's diligent with her own hands. She works hard. She's a helpmate for her husband. She brings him no grief. He can trust safely in her. When she says something, he can take her at her word. We know this because the scriptures tell us that that's what a truly virtuous and good woman does. And we also know that she is hardworking and she is frugal with resources. She just doesn't just willy-nilly just go blow it off. Um, and we also know that, that she's also good in business and she is really good at running her household. Uh, or if she doesn't have a household yet, at least she's really good at being a helpmate for her husband, helping him to achieve um, a common vision in life for both of their sakes, as, as well as to the Lord. And we also know, and this is important, that she is kind and generous to the needy, to those who are less fortunate than herself. That she is not tight with resources when people are in need. If it's within her power to give, then she'll know because she's frugal whether or not she can. She will give it. And her husband will be blessed. And she will have praise both of her husband and her children and of men. As of the community, she'll eventually reach a place of true prominence. If she will diligently adhere to the ways of the Lord in this current life. And she will submit to her husband in all godly things. If her husband's trying to lead her down a path that's not godly or going down a path that's going to lead to spiritual deception, no, she's under no obligation there to submit to him. He doesn't have his, her best interest at heart. Maybe he's deceived and he thinks he does. It doesn't really matter. Um, a Christian woman who has the Holy Spirit will know whether will know the doctrine that I'm speaking, whether it's of God or not, and she'll know whether or not her husband's trying to lead her down the wrong path or not, and whether he has her best interests at heart or not. Uh, and how do you know when someone is loving you, when someone loves you versus someone is just in a state of lust? This plays important. This is important to marriage too. Love gives, sacrifices and gives. Lust takes. So, uh, take what I say for what it's worth. Perhaps you find no value in it whatsoever, in which case just ignore it. But I do appreciate you listening and I'm going to be doing a video very soon on a godly husband and what he should look like. Church, we really need to get it together. We, need, we are in the world, but we should not be of the world. We should not follow her pernicious ways because it's all about the here and now 
and it's all about me and what I can do for myself and God is not involved people who say they know God and yet they are they put themselves up as their own God they know nothing uh, they are blind um, and as a Christian it is our job we are commissioned to go out and preach this gospel to every creature uh, and Jesus has preached this gospel to every creature they that believe and are baptized that means immersed in God's spirit shall be saved they that believe not the scriptures say shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They'll speak no longer about themselves all the time, but about God's ways. And they'll be going back to the things of God. They'll be speaking with new tongues. They won't speak like the world anymore. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll start speaking the words of God even if they've never studied it it'll just come out of the heart because the Spirit of God dwells in them so they'll speak with new tongues they'll take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them and that is metaphorical as much as possibly physical um, if you if you fall into any deadly trap of the devil that's poisonous if you drink any deadly thing, if you ingest any deadly thing, as a born-again Christian, it will not hurt you. We shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. As the Spirit moves you, of course, because we know in balance in Scripture that it is as the Spirit wills to do these things and not as we will ourselves. We can't just turn the spiritual gifts of God on and off like reaching over and turning on a faucet. But your wife, a godly wife, will follow your lead, husband. She will listen to your counsel and your advice. And she will submit to it, most especially if it truly is God-centered and God-directed with her best interests at heart because she knows that you will do her no harm and she will trust in you. I'm just going to leave it right there. I tend to ramble, especially toward my vid in the, my videos, and I apologize. You all have a blessed day and a blessed week. And if you have any other qualities to add that I may have missed, please put them down in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say about marriage and about wives in particular on this video. And be ready because I will be making one for husbands as well. Thanks.